For those of you that are World War II fans, here's a fact you haven't heard before. German U-boat crews sank over a million tons of Allied ships wearing cargo pants made in England and the USA. Seriously, you had Wolfpack commanders like Wolfgang Luth out there wearing trousers stamped made in the USA as he sank US merchant marine ships. So what's the story here? How did cargo pants, a relatively new invention made in the USA, end up in the hands of a bunch of German U-boat crews? Now, the story of the cargo pant begins in the 1930s. And what we see are militaries around the world are starting to spend a lot more on their armed forces. So they decide, hey, let's spend a little bit on uniforms. The British in particular, they had not really redesigned their battle dress since 1902. So in the early 1930s, the designers hit the board and they said, you know what? We want to use a little bit less fabric because that's going to be an issue whenever you're at war, you've got a ration fabric. And we want something that's got mobility, something that's going to be functional, something that is more modern that doesn't have to have flashy colors. In fact, they made sure the buttons were something that, yeah, you never had to shine them. Before that, you know, everything was about pomp. Everything was about bright colors. Everything was about just over the top. They got away from that very quickly. They had learned their lessons from World War One, And so, in 1937, we saw the first look of the new battle dress. Now, the field service dress, FSD is what eventually be called, was initially made from denim, but they said, you know what? Let's use a khaki serge. That is going to actually do a better job of keeping our guys warm. It's, you know, just simply a better material is going to be more breathable. But they said, you know what? Let's adjust a few things. Everything had to have a place. Everything had to have a purpose with British design. So the initial cargo pant had three pockets. One on the right back for personal items. Then you had a pleated pocket on the front right side for field dressings. And then you had one large flat pocket on the left thigh with a hidden button flap that was specifically made to hold maps. And down at the bottom of the trousers, they actually had tabs. This made gathering the material, basically wrapping it around the ankle easier. That was important because with the combat shoe, they would have gaiters that would keep everything nice and neat down there. Before that, they had had really high leather boots, which were incredibly expensive. So this was was all saving. You know, these were a very utilitarian design. Now, what's interesting, except for a few modifications, we're talking they got rid of the tabs at the bottom of the cargo pants. They got rid of the belt loops. They adjusted the pocket on the, you know, for the map pocket. They made it so the button went all the way through, saved a little bit of fabric there. Point being is this was used for the next 25 years. It was very functional, very useful type of design. And uh, if you like this video, if you want to see more like it, talking about military history, again, give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that you want to see more videos from me like this. Now, really quick, gents, when it comes to tactical pants, when it comes to cargo pants, you want to grab yours over at 511. I've got these in my office and I have to say they are friggin' amazing. As a former military man, I love myself a good pair of cargo pants, a good pair of combat pants that I can wear into the brush if I'm going to go out hunting. If I'm going to be out, you know, just simply working out in the yard and I want something that's tough, that's durable, something that has extra room so I can store things right in the pockets. Now, specifically, I had 5.11 send me a pair of their strike pants. These are going to be a regular fit. They're self-adjusting tunnel waistband. They've got articulated knees with knee pad pockets. You've got 12 total pockets. Yes, a lot of pockets for these cargo pants. They've got the YKK zipper, the prim snaps. They also have bar tacking at major seams and stress points. Basically, these things are made to be tough. And made from a blend of polyester and cotton. This is their flex tack. It's a mechanical stretch ripstop fabric in 6.8 ounces made with a Teflon finish. In summary, these cargo pants are functional. They're tough. They're versatile, they're durable, and they look good. Now, I also received a pair of their Tack Like Pro Pants. These cargo pants have eight pockets and they're made from their rip stock 6.2 ounce Teflon finished fabric. These cargo pants as well are double reinforced at the seat and then the knees. They've got the whole knee pad ready thing and they've got gusseted construction for flexibility and strength. Triple stitching and extra sized pockets for tactical use. Guys, if you conceal carry, if you are a type of guy that you're in security, you're looking for a pair of pants, these are the ones for you. Check out the backpack, the Rush 100. I've got this as well. Guys, I do some backpacking. I get out there. I got tons of friends that hunt. I love spending time outdoors and I have to say that this backpack is second to none when it comes to the frame, the construction. As a former military guy, I have used backpacks and this thing blows away anything I was ever issued. An awesome company. I'm proud to work with them. They've got great gear. Again, guys, if you're looking for something casual, if you're looking for cargo pants, if you're looking for anything that's going to be for the outdoors, anything that's with function, 
functional clothing, check out 511 and use that deal. Use that link in the description of today's video to make sure you get the best deal on the web. So now let's get into the part of the story, how the U-boat crews got access to these American and British made cargo pants. So in 1938, those FSD uniforms went into mass production. The United States was helping out the English and was producing a lot of these made in the USA, made over in the UK. You had these uniforms being made in mass and they were being deployed and sent over to France in 1939, 1940. We had the phony war going on. War had been declared, but nothing was going on. So you had stockpiles of these uniforms, specifically those cargo pants in warehouses, on trains, just simply ready to be used, ready for men to start wearing them. Well, if you know your history, you know that in the spring of 1940, the Germans executed brilliantly on their blitzkrieg attack through Northern Europe and basically outflanked and used a pincher maneuver to trap the Allies at Dunkirk. Now, the Allies were able to, in the most part, escape. But what did they leave behind? Pretty much everything, including tons of supplies down in France. And throughout 1940, you know, throughout the summer, we saw France, you know, try to hold up, but they were able to go in there, the Germans over, and to take over half of the country. And what they were able to capture were tons of supplies and tons of cargo pants. Now, German ingenuity is second to none, but they recognized, hey, the English and the Americans, they were actually producing something pretty good here. So, we could take our existing existing tops. And for men who are on submarines, are not going to be actually out there, you know, fighting on the ground, are going to be actually on these boats and need some extra change of clothing. These bottoms, these cargo pants are perfect and they are incredibly functional. In fact, submarine U-boat crews, they loved these trousers. They actually did very well for what they were intended to do. They were comfortable. You could have, you know, things you could carry around. They served a solid purpose. And yes, tens of thousands of pairs of American and English made cargo pants were worn by German U-boat crews as they were sinking English and American ships. Now, looking at the English combat FSD trousers, you may say, well, how did they evolve into the modern cargo pants? Because the ones I've seen, the actual pockets are over on the sides and they're two and they are equal basically in size and look. Well, this was developed in the 19, I think it was 41, 42. We saw paratroopers in the United States need a specific type of pants that could hold additional rounds of ammunition. Basically, magazines, you could put, you know, this is something with modern warfare. We saw the machine gun. We saw basically these ammo hungry weapons. We had all types of additional explosive things that needed to be carried. And, you know, it was something that was notorious whenever you were jumping out of an airplane that parts of your gear would actually separate from you. You wouldn't have it. So you wanted to have what was really important to you right in those cargo pockets because it wasn't going anywhere. And that's what we saw. In fact, it was airborne. They were allowed to actually add additional pockets where they were one of the only units that could actually adjust their uniforms. No one said anything about it, Part, partly also because they had a very high, uh, you know, death rate. So these guys, you know, all, my salute to anyone that served in airborne or jumps out of airplanes for, you know, but uh, yeah, we saw the modern day cargo pant evolve out of this particular style developed for the U.S. Army, 1942, 1943, but by, yeah, 43, it was a set design and really what we wear today is very similar. Now, because of the functionality of cargo pants, we continue to see these serve in various military units around the world. And to this day, they are still in use. But how did they make it into the civilian world? So initially, it was simply military surplus. The 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, the only people that would really be wearing cargo pants were maybe former military men who simply missed the fit and the usefulness, the look of it. In the 1980s, though, we saw designers start to pick up on this, and it was simple. It was made from, you know, the same type of twill that they had had in the military, but they went more with a fashionable look. This was also a time in which clothing was very baggy, so we're talking also the early 1990s. This is when cargo pants started to get picked up. You saw companies like Ralph Lauren putting out these simple cargo pants in a loose design, and it really worked, not only because of the loose overall build it fit with, you know, its heritage, but they were functional for a lot of dads. In fact, we saw in the 1980s and 1990s, the cargo short emerge, and it emerged, you know, simply, it's functional. That's why so many men love it, and yes, I know I've even made videos about why I hate cargo shorts, but when it comes down to it, 
as a dad that was just at Universal Studios Hollywood, I can tell you a good pair of cargo shorts, yeah, they can be a lifesaver when you don't have a backpack and you just need an extra place to be able to put tickets and all the other stuff that you carry. Now, in the modern man's wardrobe, is there a place for cargo pants? I think that they are fun, they're classic, especially if you get a pair that fits you properly. So, never be afraid to take your trousers in and get them adjusted to feel a little bit better if that's your thing. If you like them a loose fit and you're going to be out in the brush, you're going to be using them for a functional purpose. I think that they are great. So, what video to watch next? How about iconic fashion trends that are surprisingly military in origin? A lot of people don't even know that the clothing they're wearing has a military origin. These particular pieces I cover in this video, guys, a lot of guys don't know about. So, check it out right here. A great video if you like military history, if you are into fashion and icons. And yeah, it's a good one. Check it out, guys. Boom, click it. Magically, you will go over and check it out.